Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the February 7th, 2022 work session of the Salisbury City Council. We have a uh, several items on the agenda tonight and following the work session, we will go into a closed session. First up um, is an ordinance of abandonment of Linwood Avenue and the director of the Department of Infrastructure and Development, Amanda Pollack, will make the presentation. Amanda? Good afternoon, everyone. So we received a request from a property owner to abandon an unimproved section of Linwood Avenue that's between East Isabella Street and Grace Street. Um, the property owner made the request because people are cutting through that right of way, even though it is unimproved and driving very close to their house. So we followed our normal procedures and the city surveyor has sent letters to the adjacent property owners and we have received responses from all of the adjacent property owners that they are in favor of the proposed abandonment. So attached is the ordinance to abandon the alley. I will note that all of the adjacent properties front other roads, so none of them needed this alley for access way. Thank you. Mr. Uh, questions or comments, Mr. Boda? You're on mute, Mir. No, I, I think this makes a lot of sense, uh, especially if it's something that we don't intend to build a, a street on. So um, I'm, I'm in favor of this. Thank you. Ms. Jackson? Um, I'd like to ask the question, is this the um, same area where there was an altercation with some young kids um, dismantling the yards, the fences, and some other things where the police were called several times? That I am not personally familiar with. I don't know if, if Julie or the mayor are aware. I'm not sure, I'm sorry. Because I can I can remember Linwood Avenue, and I can remember that actual particular area where the um, cops were called several times in reference to uh, is a, a fence in that yard or something, and the kids were dismantling it and coming through the yard doing disrespectful things. So, I mean, I have no problem with it. Um, but if someone can answer the question. Councilwoman, I'm... I'm not familiar with uh, with that situation. We can uh, inquire with the police um, and see if we can figure out exactly um, where you're um, where you're mentioning. But I, I can't tell. I can't speak to it at this moment. Okay. The young. I, I remember the young kids were. It was a, actually it was videoed, um, and where the cops had apprehended a couple of young. I think it was either last year, or year before last. I can't. I actually remember it, the date, but I know it was um, sent to the police department because the family was going to try to sue the police department, but it was because of that actual situation with Linwood Avenue and them um, trespassing. So. Thank you, April. Mm -hmm. uh, Angela? No questions or comments. Will you support it? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you. Mrs. Gregory? No questions or comments. Support it. Thank you. You may have to adjust your volume, Michelle. It was a little low, but I heard you. Okay. Um, one question I have, Amanda. Do you know, are, they, are we going to block the end so people can't get in there? Because they still could drive through, I would imagine, correct? That's true. Yeah, so that property owner plans to put up a fence, but we can put this on the list for sidewalk to take away the depressed sidewalk and make it, you know, regular curb, full height curb there. Gotcha. Because right Thank now there's depression much. at the at the alley. So. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, if he wants to put up barriers, but we should still, I guess, still have a sidewalk there. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, and I support it as well. Uh, Julie, can you make sure that gets on the agenda? Thank you. Okay, next one is the one I always look forward to for an update. It's the update on the Here is Home incentive program. Um, Amanda, you got that one too. Yes, yes. So the last time I gave you an update was on January 3rd. A lot's happened since. Uh, in your council package, you'll see nine new projects that came in in the time since January 3rd when I put the memo together. 
since that time, another three have come in. So what's on your in your package showed um, 1,140 new units that came in in the last month for a total of 2,290 units. In the last week, since I put this memo in, we had three more applications for 220 more units. All of those were apartments. So our grand total um, number of units right now, let me switch screens, is 2,510. Uh, we are still getting a ton of calls and a lot of interest. I actually expect we'll probably um, come close to maybe even doubling that number, I hesitate to say, in the next two weeks. So there are still a lot of things that, are, that we're tracking that are coming in. I have um, someone coming in tomorrow who is bringing four applications. So this number will change daily. But that is where we are right now. We're up to 2,510 new residential units um, from this program. Thank you. Comments from the council, Mr. Boda. Hey, that's that's a fantastic number. And, and to even know that there's more interest, uh, I, I think this is working exactly as we intended it uh, so far. So uh, proud to support this program. Thank you, Mayor. April? I'm, a, I'm excited. Um, I'm here to support it. So thank you. Let's move forward. Angela. That's fantastic. Unbelievable. Definitely. Michelle. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yeah, you're still a little low. But we can hear you. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I think this is amazing and these housing units are so desperately needed. So I'm, I'm very excited to hear about this. Yeah, I am too. Um, and to those people that called me and said that this thing will never work, um, I think you were wrong. But anyway, uh, moving along. Um, next up, uh, and, the, and the final item uh, for the work session is the CIP presentation. And uh, I'm gonna, in a second, I'll turn it over to the mayor. But uh, first, I would like to thank, er I thank everybody, Keith and your staff, we're getting this early enough so that we can review it similar to the way we review uh, the budget. And if I can, I would like to have um, maybe a general summary, comments from the mayor and a general sum summary. And then I've got my notes and questions as we go through it. And maybe we'll go right through the um, council people and do it that way. And we'll address those issues that each of us have. Does that sound good to everybody? Okay, I see a lot of nodding. Mr. Mayor? Mr. President, <clears throat> thank, thank you. Um, that was uh, how we prepared to go through this, so perfect. Um, let me start by saying that the, uh, the people who deserve credit for putting effort into this product um, are uh, largely on this call, although I see we're missing uh, Chris Damone, um, who uh, put a lot of effort into the design and uh, formatting of this document. Um, I also want to just say thank you to each of the department heads, uh, this state and, and their entire teams. As you know, um, uh, in some of our larger departments, there uh, there is a, a, a good process of uh, developing future leaders and, and the next generational leadership uh, in preparation of not only the budget documents, but also CIP. So, um, so this is an inclusive process and a lot of work goes into building the product that you see before you. Um, and very little of that has to do with myself. So credit where credit is due. Um, so what I wanna share with you is that we again come before you with a five-year plan for the city's capital improvements um, that uh, includes the projects that, um, that qualify as uh, capital projects. So greater than 25,000. Um, dollars expense uh, um, in our capital plan for 2000, FY 2023 through FY 27. Um, you know, Jack, I was remembering back to the very first CIP that I handled, which was, I think, the, the 13 to 17. Um, so my how rapidly times change. And there are people on this call who uh, can probably go much, much further back than that. Um, you know, I'm seeing uh, nods and smiles from from John Tull and Amanda Pollock and Dave Meinstein who have, and Bill Garrett who have seen quite a few of these, I know. Um, so the team here 
um, has put together uh, a, a reflection of our priorities. Another thing I want to point out is that this is a continuation of the the laborious process that we have undertaken of ensuring that we are doing good planning um, and that that planning is then tied directly to capital expenditures and subsequently or to capital planning and subsequently to our budget. So the, um, the, the planning that you see, the result of that planning is that you'll see um, projects like uh, zoo, um, zoo improvements that are uh, subsequent projects out of the zoo master plan or the city park master plan or our rail trail plan or uh, our downtown master plan. Um, and the same is true this year of, uh, of many of our neighborhood parks. So we're continuing down that process of, of going from visioning and planning to uh, capital planning, capital project planning to uh, execution via the budget. So uh, setting that stage, um, there's, there's many things that uh, you know, are of value here. Um, it's all important, but I will draw your attention to a few things. Um, we continue to march forward with the North Prong Park. Uh, we continue to march forward with the Spine Rail Trail project. Um, you'll see a number of new lines. Uh, actually, you saw it last year, but I wasn't around for Vision Zero uh, projects, um, really critical projects there. A continuation of our investment in uh, bike infrastructure, uh, pedestrian safety, of course, uh, the zoo uh, and city park, as well as uh, street light replacement. You know, we, we don't know what the future holds as far as highway user revenues, but we continue to also be aggressive in planning uh, the uh, uh, reconstruction and surface maintenance of our streets as well. So um, I open now to your questions. Actually, before I do, I want to make sure I haven't missed anything. I'll ask uh, City Administrator Glanz if there's anything she'd like to add. Mayor, just to echo your, your comments about our, our team pulling this together again. Uh, it's a big lift. So thank everybody for all their hard work. Uh, but I think you covered the big highlights. Thank you. Council people, we are uh, going to open the floor now and, and go through uh, any questions you might have or comments regarding the sections of the, uh, and, and I will say, will also say this, um, the way it was presented with the summaries and the breakdowns was very, very easy to follow. And, and I neglected to thank all the department heads and, and uh, their associates uh, because it, it, it seems to be getting easier every year. I, probably because we've been done, I've done it for a little while, but I think uh, certainly the information in the presentation is, is top notch. Uh, Mr. Boda, questions or comments on any of the particulars in the um, in the plan. Um, no, I just I just had one question. Uh, I mean, I think overall it, it reflects our our vision and our priorities as as a team, as a city, uh, and I and I appreciate that. And I know this year we we made some investments uh, that I think brought some things off that that would have been on the CIP had we not made those investments. Um, on on page thirty two of the agenda packet. Uh, there, it's a line about it's under housing first under HCDD, but I think was this it's it says housing first vehicle replacement, but then the the thing is uh, talks about uh, offering low cost municipal broadband internet. Um, was that supposed to be put up under uh, bills uh, section? Mir, uh, we have since identified a few edits that need to be made. That is one of them. Okay. Um, so, um, I've got the other one. Yeah, there are, there are a couple. Um, <laughs> in, in getting it early to you, Jack, we, we, we did leave some, some things out. So I apologize on behalf of the team. <laughs> well, I think you, add, you added some things in too. Um, under field uh, ops, the trash truck, that's another one that has a little bit of a, I read it and I was confused. The explanation. What page? Uh, I didn't put no. the page down. I got just have my notes. I'll, I'll, I'll we will. We'll. I. I ensure that we will do a clean scrub before uh, the okay. agenda packet goes out on Wednesday. Uh, we've already had a discussion on that. I thought there was some kind of contest where if we identify it, we get like a free lunch or something. But that's okay. Oh, the broadband internet. 
continued on to field ops, the rear load trash truck. Uh, okay. So Jenna, you don't want to take that project over? Is. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you, Amir, but go ahead. Yeah, uh, anything okay. else? But uh, is, that, is that part, what is that program? Is that part of our investment in the company that's looking to offer uh, internet or is this something different? No, the um, the the project in the CIP is for the expansion of our um, citywide fiber. It's the um, connecting of the far out remote sites like the wastewater plant, um, the water plants, the zoo, um, bringing them off of a slower VPN tunnel based connection onto a, a hard, a hard dedicated fiber project. Oh, OK, but I didn't know was this. I'm talking about what's written under the housing first vehicle. Is that something that we're legitimately going to do a study on? It, it's a municipal broadband internet service to its citizens. Mira, I can Project address that. It, it, that's okay. been in, yeah, that's that's appeared in our CIP every year for the last six years. Um, and yes, it is something that we have continued to um, treat as a uh, distant interest. Um, you know, we, uh, we haven't aggressively pursued it, um, but it's something that we remain uh, interested in and don't want to lose sight of. Okay. Um, yeah. That thanks, really Mary. Okay. Ms. Jackson? Um, I really have no questions, but I do want to say that I see where the um, revenue has been appropriately um, distributed throughout the city. So I really have no problem. I really thank you all for doing what you've done. I mean, because I've gone over it these past few days and I've looked and seems like everything is where it should be. Thank you. Thank you, April. Ms. Blake? I don't have any questions or comments. The document looks pretty good. I like this organization. <laughs> it may need thank to be cleaned you. up or whatever, but it looks good. Thank you. Michelle, questions? No questions. It looks great. Really well. Okay. Organized. Thank you. Uh, I've got a few, and I, I, some of them I know the answers to, but I think it'd be good for the public to to hear some of the some of these uh, items. Uh, the town square, Mayor, could you just very quickly give a the three hundred thousand? What's what's the the end game? The goal for that? Uh, so that's the last uh, contribution of funds toward um, the town square project, uh, approximately $2 million uh, project, the first phase of which has been built. Uh, phase one is um, next to the uh, parking garage that the city owns in downtown. Uh, it's a um, hardscape surface with pavers, street lights, um, some benches um, and planters, things like that that surface will continue at that same grade. So the street, Division Street will still be a street, but this, the street will come up into a speed table. Um, I think the center of the, the West Main Street, uh, the plaza area where it, uh, West Main meets St. Peter's uh, comes up into a speed table there. Um, that's just slow traffic in a pedestrian area. Um, that that um, uh, plaza will continue, Amanda, what is it? Maybe a hundred? Feet. Mm -hmm. Yep, about, about 100 feet into lot one. Yes. Into lot one. And we are, and Amanda can speak this, we're, we're in design right now with Design Collective and progressing forward. Uh, Amanda, maybe you can speak to some of the features. Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to. So as the mayor noted, Division Street will be at the same elevation as where the food truck pad is. But during the typical week, we'll have bollards that define where the street is. And those are the screw type bollards. So we can take them out and then block off the intersections when we have events. So during a, you know, a third Friday, if that's the area we're using, we would have that area blocked off so traffic can't, can't cross there. And then also, if you drive down that block of division right now, you'll notice it's really wide compared to the adjacent blocks of Division Street. So we'll be narrowing it up so that it's the same width as the block to the north. So that means our town square will, will come over to the east a little bit. So the biggest feature of town square is what we're calling a flex lawn. So it's a synthetic type lawn surface, which means it has under drains. So when it rains, 
like today, if there was an event tonight when the rain stopped, then the, the area would be wet, but not muddy. So it would be usable, you know, the area will drain. And that flex lawn could be used for any number of things, yoga, cornhole, you know, all sorts of events, just people putting out a blanket and sitting down. Next to that will be a fountain area that's just kind of like little, little fountains that shoot up, not like a huge 60 foot tall shooting fountain, but you know, a playful fountain and something that kids will wanna run through. So in the summertime, you know, there's seating around the fountain and you could see, you know, just kids running through it. Uh, we are going to make it sturdy enough that in the winter time, that's where our large Christmas tree goes. So we'll have a fixture in the bottom so that that tree that's in the park could actually go in this location and then the ice skating rink could go where the flex lawn is so this really could be the center of activities in multiple seasons we'll also have a kid play area that's not a playground but it's a it's a space where kids could play on essentially art features so these will be unique features that are attractive and it looks like artwork but there's a play element to them so it's not going to look like a traditional playground that's on one side of town square. On the other side is sort of your quieter area with um, tables, maybe some chess boards on tables, uh, trees, just areas to sit and relax. And that will butt up against the development from lot one. So if they have eateries, then there'll be tables outside so you can eat right next to that location. So again, we've called this the city's new li living room. This is our gathering spot. So you'll, you'll say to folks, you know, meet you at town square. I'll, you know, see at the kids side or I'll, I'll meet you over near the, you know, whatever sculpture, the unity sculpture or something else. We've had some talks with folks that are commissioning artwork that may want to put it there. So this will be, it'll match the parking garage. It'll be colorful and playful. You know, this is a, you know, a play area, a fun area and, and an area where events will be focused in the future. Great, great description. Mr. President, if I can add two things and, and yeah, that, I mean, that paints the picture. The deficiencies that this solves are that we don't have a, uh, a true gathering space in the center of our city. The, the place where most cities have sort of a, a courthouse lawn, we do, and, but it's filled with trees. It is not a, a gathering space for events and things like that. Um, you know, instead, this creates that living room that Amanda was talking about um, in you know, just, just half a block away. Um, and the second piece is that engaging families and kids in something free and at the center of the city will hopefully engender love for um, the heart of the city in future generations um, beyond any of us on this screen. Um, so that's, that's kind of the hope of uh, building a new living room right in the center of the city. And, and as you're aware, you know, we have uh, you know, for several years been in negotiations with the buyers of that land. And we have negotiated back that portion, so we will retain ownership of it because we're, you know, we're much closer to executing than we were previously, and we're ready to move forward. Thank you, thank you both. Um, my second thing is, uh, I know we have a couple of projects: uh, Mill Street Bridge uh, rehab, and we're talking about Beaver Dam and, and those areas. Um, has any? Have we, do we know if any of the money that's earmarked for infrastructure in the feds program applicable to any of these projects? I, I can no take this if you'd like. Go ahead, <laughs> so go ahead, man. The Mill Street Bridge reconstruction, as well as the Naylor Mill Bridge, which is no longer in the CIP, because, well, actually, it may still be in there for construction. That is funded through the state of Maryland uh, in an 80-20 cost share. So we are getting 80% grant for both of those projects right now. So that was actually a, an existing state program ahead of what the federal government's putting out. So there, there could potentially be more, but at a minimum, that's the cost share we're looking at. Good, so they could pick up the 20, hopefully. We, we can always we'll apply for that or try to. You can always apply, yeah. And we do a good job with, with that kind of thing. So I, I, that's positive. Um, oh, Mr. President, if I can just yeah. add, um, so something I learned uh, last week, so the National League of Cities had the um, state presidents of uh, uh, municipal leagues um, come in and we met with um, Department of Transportation and White House officials. And they were really clear about something that um, they had worked very hard for this infrastructure bill to have monies that were not set aside to go through states and were direct funding allocations to municipalities and counties 
and tribal governments. And that all of that money over and above past uh, um, or planned federal spending, federal budgets for the coming years, all of that money will be spoken for within six months. And so they, they described a process and there's now a guidebook out um, and uh, you know, there's a two page, pages five and six, they kept referencing pages five and six of this guidebook that tell you entirely how to apply for the money. I don't think there's anybody in the world that believes that statement, but they, yeah. that's what they say. But what they were very clear about is tell us right now, right now what you want, because if you don't, you will not get it. So uh, we are, uh, I've shared that with Julia and Andy in the last 24 hours. Um, we're going to have to start putting uh, pen to paper um, on that or, you know, keystrokes to computer. Um, and, and I think uh, that's something that our, um, uh, our grants team is going to have to spend a lot of time on. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of projects. We have a look at this capital improvement plan. We have a lot of needs. We have a lot of wishes. We have things we want. Um, and if there are resources out there, let's go fight for it. Great. Thank you. Um, one for uh, the fire chief. John, um, 1.5 for, uh, for the rescue truck. Is that just the truck or are we filling the whole thing or filling it up with stuff? Um, I wish we were filling it up with a lot of stuff. Um, but no, it is calls the vehicle manufacturer, the vehicle, all the specialty compartments to hold uh, the hydraulic tools. I believe that in that cost is the cost of hydraulic tools, but that's it. Everything else will be moved from our existing rescue truck over to the new one. Um, so this is just uh, markup and cost of price, inflation, um, Pierce is getting ready to have another 7% price increase. Um, so it's just the, the standard price. Yeah, I was afraid of that. I, I hate to tell you what, what my first rescue truck that I participated in purchasing, what that cost. <laughs> <laughs> it, we, we probably could have paid that from a petty cash, I think, compared to this. But um, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Question on the um, rail trail master plan. Um, are there any things we still have to work out with the railroad that would yes. impede this? Yes, definitely. <laughs> yes. So we, we are still looking at potentially some alternative alignments that parallel the railroad because at this point they, they still are not allowing us in their right of way. So there may be some places where we have to go back to them and negotiate specific parts. And, and frankly, the mayor and I have talked about this a lot. We're going to build the parts we can build and then get down to those little pinch points and say, we need your help right here. We've, we've got to go in your right of way. So we have um, design contracts out now and are identifying those areas and working on obtaining any other easements that we need for the rail trail. Great. Yeah, Mr. Know, I, love I love plan Bs. Mr. President, the, there, are, there are aspects of this rail trail that are as much about neighborhood revitalization as they are um, connectivity. Um, so there are certain things that I just don't think we can abandon um, and others where we can find a, a parallel route. So take, for example, what I think of as uh, one of the two most critical pieces, which is the Church Street neighborhood. Um, you know, you got Railroad Avenue. You got this massive expanse from building facade to building facade, you know, probably 150 feet. I don't know, but close to it. You got this huge expanse of asphalt just and gravel parking, you know, just a wasteland. And it's all chopped up. You know, a little bit of this business center owns that. The railroad owns some. The city owns some. And it could easily be a beautiful green space that still had, you know, just as many parking spaces along the edges, still had two working streets, had trails had trees and definitely, in my opinion, just give up the, don't even worry about the part owned by the railroad. Um, but we've got to get as close as we can. We can't have them telling us we can't get close when it's not even their property. And they, ha they do have some sway. Uh, they do have uh, some sway over um, uh, uh, a certain distance from center line on uh, the railroad track. So, but it's so important. And, and the same is true down, um, 
you know, near uh, Tidal Health and uh, Evolution, where you've got that that strip. Now, there's pieces of that they own. There's pieces of that owned by other private entities. But you know, I think each is so important. And as Amanda said, we've got to, um, I think, build out what is buildable now and fight uh, fight to connect those pieces in the end. And the reason why, rather than start, you know, at one end and work to the other, is to demonstrate that this thing is an asset. Um, so that people will see, like, I wish it connected from here to here. Why is that piece not done? And then we can put the pressure on those who are standing in the way. Agree. I think it's a good strategy. A um, couple more. Uh, one, I am thrilled to see the automated water meters. Um, and uh, how many do we have now? I know we've started transfer. Any anyone that's changed out now is uh, remotely capable of of giving the uh, the reading. Um, are we like 10% there, 15%? Does anybody have that number? Could you get that number? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. Um, we're about 10% a year. Um, okay. What we're trying to do the ones that are going, um, new ones that are put in are put in using the AMI technology, old ones um, using the old technology uh, we're replacing about 10% a year. We are trying to increase that um, number every year um, because at 10% a year, you're really looking at a 10 year <laughs> um, thing. So we're, we're trying very hard to, um, actually CORE will be trying very, very hard with a new reorganization to speed that along. And Amanda is also um, has been um, active in trying to pursue grants through MDE to help um, offset some of the cost for that program. That's great. Great, Jana, thank you. Um, this one I ask every year. Where are we in the paving? I know we had, we had how many years ago did we rank all the streets? That was like. Uh, that was probably eight or nine years ago. And I was so, like 35 then, so. Yeah. Um, who, who, yeah, could be. April. <laughs> You know, Jack, we funded we funded doing that again uh, with ARP money this year. Yeah, yes. I, I saw I saw that. That's that's good. So, what, do you think we're do you think all the fives are gone? Well, that's as soon as the question. five's gone, there's a new five. Yeah, the becomes, next the fours become five. I know. Well, the, everything deteriorates. It's asphalt. Yeah. So it just yeah. You know, it's getting better. That's all. Well, we have <laughs> kept those numbers updated, even though we didn't hire a consultant to redo them. We have continually updated the numbers. So it'll be nice to start fresh with a new contract and new numbers. But yeah, so that there will always be fives. And, you know, we, we will update that on years when we don't have a consultant doing that for us. Gotcha. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, let's see. Uh, Waterworks, one question. This is my last question. Um, we had we had a, in the presentation today there was um, a list of things from the park well area. Now we had invested in the last three or four years different components in there. Are those still uh, valuable compared to what we want to do now? Are they going to are they going to be used? I'm not sure I understand your question. You're talking about the wells, the there, there, was, there were there were pumps. There was a pump. There was a valve. There was uh, things that we've purchased in the last couple of years. And what I'm saying is, it's not a complete redo. Can we use those parts? Yeah. Well, usually when we rehabilitate the wells in the park, we usually have to replace everything that's in them because we're not getting them rehab fast enough. So we usually have to replace the pump motor because they're just slammed full of iron from all the heavy use. So um, if you're referring to, we recently replaced all the high service pumps in the park plant. You might be talking to that because that just got finished. Those are still good and those will be going for a long right. time. They don't get dirty because they're pumping the clean water. So they're in the gotcha. plant. The ones that are down in the well get slammed up with iron and they usually have to be replaced. Gotcha. Okay. Um, the, uh, the other thing that I saw which was intriguing was the um, computer-assisted dispatch system. 
Can we talk about that for a second? Because I'm not really clear on how it works. Just briefly. Yeah, sure. The um, this this past year, um, we got the we hired a consultant. Um, that was part of the original year of funding. That was last fiscal year. Um, we got the um, consultant selected. Um, we brought them in. We had them do a full needs analysis with the police department, the fire department, pretty much anybody who would be using the the CAD system for dispatch. Um, emergency dispatch and um, the next phase of the project is the actual purchase of a replacement uh, CAD system. Uh, the, ver the system that the police department is using is, is um, antiquated. Um, it's, it's very problematic. Um, we've been having um, just many issues with it. Uh, it's just technologically it was built on an older infrastructure and um, modern systems are much more reliable, much, much more efficient. Uh, be able to do a much better job and provide a much um, much better system for our officers and our fire fire department to use um, as a backup center. So, um, yeah, the, the this phase of the project is the actual purchase of that software. Our, um, we're putting out um, the the vendor is putting out and crafting the RFP for us to use to put out the request for that. Great, thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. That's that's all the questions that I have. Um, and again, uh, I support it. Um, and um, thank you very much for uh, for the effort. Uh, it was very, very well presented, which makes it simple to uh, find out what questions you have. And I, I think it, it was good. So uh, we have that completes the items uh, that are on the uh, agenda. But we do have a proclamation that we're going to do. Uh, and I believe Julia's going to handle that. Am I correct? No. Got it. The mayor's going to handle that. Yes. Um, so, Mr. President, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the council, thank you very much. Um, today, uh, I am proud to uh, share this proclamation, and uh, you, know, you will. You'll understand momentarily um, why we are announcing our appreciation for um, those who uh, have been through a tough fight over the last uh, two years, really. Uh, so whereas on January 4th, 2022, the state of Maryland declared a 30-day state of emergency in response to the COVID-19 Omicron variant and our frontline healthcare workers, including doctors, nurses, EMS workers, first responders, Pharmacists, laboratory technicians, mental health professionals, and critical clinical staff have continued to lead the state's public health response with tireless professionalism. And over the course of the 30-day state of emergency, the state of Maryland has reported substantial improvements in key health metrics, including significant declines in hospitalizations. And our frontline healthcare workers and their families deserve our deepest gratitude for being strong and brave when others aren't and can't be, when they're scared and in need of support. And the residents and businesses in Salisbury, Maryland would like to extend their sincere appreciation to the frontline healthcare heroes for demonstrating the definition of Salisbury strong day after day after day. Now, therefore, I, Jacob Arday, Mayor of the City of Salisbury, do hereby proclaim February 7th through 13th, 2022 as Healthcare Heroes Appreciation Week in our city and encourage the community to use this week as an opportunity to extend your heartfelt appreciation by letting the healthcare heroes know they are also your superheroes. Uh, I'll share this closing quote. I think a hero is an ordinary individual who finds the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. Superman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well done. Um, okay, and because we're going into closed session, I'm gonna open the floor for uh, remarks right now. So um, administration, Mr. Mayor. If you'd like to have some mark, remarks for the good of the order. Um, sure. Uh, well, um, you know, we've got a, a great leadership team here. I'm so proud to see uh, the department heads with us tonight. Um, you know, our council, our senior administration folks. Um, I'm just really grateful of the team we have and that we've built over the years here. Um, it, uh, it's painful um, for me to, um, to have to acknowledge that uh, 
one of those members may be moving on to a, a different job uh, at some point. Um, not yet, um, but what, a month, uh, maybe? Unless we can convince her to stick around longer. Um, you know, this is, uh, this is a unique organization. I've been a part of a lot of things in my life and um, you know, nothing quite like this. And uh, you know, I'm not gonna use the, the family cliche, but what I'll say is um, we are mission oriented always, uh, but we take care of our people. And uh, anytime we have a change in uh, a senior leader, um, it hurts. Um, with that, uh, I wanna share with all of you that um, uh, Amanda Pollock um, is going to be, and I know many of you on this uh, call already know this, um, is going to be um, taking on a new role outside of the organization. And um, while we wish her much success, um, hopefully not too much success, so she comes back and says, you know what, that was a mistake. I miss you all. Um, uh, so, um Amanda, as I've said in other rooms, you know, we love you, we appreciate you. And um, uh, I'm just uh, wish you the best and we will miss seeing you every day as part of uh, this team, but you know, you always have a place here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Boda. Um, well, that was a bit of a shock. Uh, so, uh, and I'll reflect what the mayor said, uh, Amanda, we appreciate you, everything you've done for the city, uh, your leadership and, uh, just how you make everything explainable and seamless is what it seems to us. But I know it's a lot of hard work, uh, in the backgrounds to, uh, make a lot of these complicated projects move forward. So, uh, that's, that's big blow. Uh, so, but we wish you luck and, you know, if you decide in the next week or so to stay, I mean, you know, maybe we need to have another closed session to discuss it. So, um, anyway, uh, glad to be back home, uh, back to work. I uh, had a good time last week in Vegas, uh, and, uh, uh, pockets a little lighter, so got to come back and, and work. So, uh, and, uh, anyway, uh. Good to be home and uh, hopefully have a good week. And I'm glad it's raining and not snowing. So that's that's a plus. Thank you, Mayor. April? Um, first of all, I want to touch on Black history. And I have a Black history segment. Um, this year's topic is um, for Black history is the theme is Black health and wellness. And I did write this down so I could have it all together. This focus will celebrate the contributions and break breakthroughs of Black professionals, as well as speaking to the cultural richness of those non-traditional health and wellness practitioners, midwives and donors. This theme will collectively celebrate by focusing on familiar rituals and practices that many in the Black community perform to improve wellness. So this year, we're concentrating not just this month, because Black history just does just not stop here in February, it continues on through the year. Um, and I also like to thank all the healthcare providers, the African-American healthcare providers that are here. Matter of fact, just like the um, mayor just gave a, um, a proclamation to Title Health. I thank all of the healthcare workers here in the whole world for doing what they have done because we have been in a crisis and it's been hard on all of us. So it's just not about just the African-Americans, it's about us all working together to make sure that black history remains a part, becomes and remains a part of history, period. I'm also Amanda, as the mayor had said as well, you're gonna be missed, see your smiling face and your rosy cheeks. And I knew it was you because I could tell by the blush on your face. I knew he didn't even have to say your name. I could tell by looking, but you're gonna be missed. And I'm like the mayor, I don't mean no harm. I hope it don't work you have to come back. <laughs> but no, I don't wish, I wish you every good thing that has to come to you. I, I wish it for you because you're very, um, a very good person. Also, I also like to let everyone know that again, the VFW, 
District 16 is um, hosting another blood bank drive um, March, the, March the 3rd from four, no, it's not, 11 to four at the um, Del Mar VFW. So I'm letting everybody know if I'm putting it on Facebook, if I tag you, please share it. Um, there's sign up sheets. Um, if you want to be a part, please let me know so we can get your name on that sheet, get your information so you can donate. We need at least 45 donors to even host this. So we, and I'm gonna tell you something, plasma is needed. It is desperately needed. And I think that the VFW is doing a great job. So please support their efforts. Thank you. Everybody have a great day. Have a great week. Thank you, April. Uh, Angela? Well, as April has said, of course, if you're healthy enough, please, please donate blood, especially for those who are not healthy. Um, and I, I got to tell you, the, the information about Amanda, I there's, I, I can't imagine anyone filling your spot. I, I just, it's unbelievable. I'm wrapping my head around it. You're phenomenal at what you do and you've done incredible things for our city. And I just, I'm excited to see where your career and life is gonna go, but I'm also very, very beholden of everything you've done for Salisbury. It's been amazing. Thank you, Angela. Michelle. I just want to ask Julia if we can maybe get some baking going and start bribing her to stay. Is that possible? Um, you know, I'm, I'm really sad to hear that you're leaving us, Amanda. <laughs> I'm really surprised, and I, but I, I'm not though, because you're so talented and and so special, and you've made Salisbury such an amazing place to live with all the work that you've done. So we're gonna miss you a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Um, She's crying. I found I found out uh, found out about this. Um, oh, I guess a week ago, and um, everybody knows what she's done on the mm -hmm. professional side, uh, but also on the personal side. Uh, I've got several. Uh, people that I have adopted uh, and uh, I'm going to miss you for sure. And not just the professional side. Uh, you can always brighten and you always do brighten my day. And, you know, when you walk into a room, the place lights up. And I think that uh, that's one of your best assets. And we will not be able to replace you. We will put somebody in your job and hopefully they will be the best that they can be, but we're not gonna replace you. And you always have a place in, in our hearts. So thank you very much. We will make you talk now. You can have another opportunity. Do you wanna talk now? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, with that, um, I will give me one second here to get my notes. I thank all the department heads for participating today. And at this point in time, I'll call for a motion to close uh, the meeting. So move. Second. Ms. Jackson made the motion. And Ms. Blake. Seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. The vote is five to zero to enter into closed session to discuss a proposal. Thank you everyone for participating. Uh, those who are in the closed session, please stay on. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we've just come out of closed session and the purpose of the closed session was to discuss a bid proposal. Seeing that there is no, no further business or comments, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a Good great night. week.